But what I want to talk about, rather than how crap things are, how crap the COP was, the failings of our government, etc. I want to instead empathize, sure, with your worry, with your despair, perhaps, with your, the deep desire that I think many of you have for your children, for future generations to be okay through what is coming. And above all, with your desire, which I bet is for 99% of you, the reason why you came onto this call this evening, to do something about it that is enough. What I want to do this evening is exclusively to speak to that. How do we get to do something about this situation that is, or at least could be, enough? I'm going to start off from Extinction Rebellion. Why? Well, because more than anyone else, Extinction Rebellion moved the dial in the last few years. If you go back to 2018 in the spring or early summer of 2018, we were still in a situation where the BBC had climate change deniers on sometimes to provide so-called balance. We had no mass movement at all on climate or ecology. We had NGOs who were doing worthy things, of course. We had the Green Party had been plugging away for many years, but frankly, we were nowhere. And well, over the course of the next 12 months, that all changed. And there's many factors behind that. Of course, absolutely critical was the way that our weather has been going critical for the last several years now. Also very important was Greta Thunberg and the school strikes movement, which happened basically at the same time. Plus there was David Attenborough with climate change the facts. There's a number of things. There was a kind of confluence uh, of factors around the 2018, 2019 period. But in this country, at any rate, the most important of all those factors was Extinction Rebellion. And what Extinction Rebellion succeeded in doing, it didn't succeed in achieving its three demands, but what it succeeded in doing by following through on a brilliantly designed strategy up until April 2019, was to achieve mass nonviolent direct action on ecology in this country for the first time ever, and to move the dial decisively as a result, to bring about a real shift in public consciousness, you can see this in opinion polls, to force the government to respond. Uh, I was among the team that met with the government um, straight after the uh, rebellion. Uh, and that wasn't their only response. They also made a concession to each of Extinction Rebellion's three demands. You'll probably be aware that XR has three demands. Number one, tell the truth. So on the Monday after the 2019 April rebellion finished, Parliament declared a climate and environment emergency. Symbolic, but they declared it. Number two, demand to act now. So that summer, very unexpectedly, the government legislated for net zero carbon emissions. Okay, by 2050, not 2025, but all the same. It was a big surprise. And number three, to upgrade uh, democracy, to bring in citizens' assemblies, and Parliament created a climate citizens' assembly in the summer of 2019. So this was quite an achievement. But as I say, XR did not actually get the letter of its demands fulfilled. We're now in 2021. It's completely non-credible that we're going to go carbon net zero by 2025 or even uh, 2030. Um, the climate situation continues to spiral out of control. Where do we get the numbers that XR wanted? Where do we get the leverage? Where do we get the transformation of those whose consciousness was transformed into building a movement and into the actual change in society that we need. Where do we get the numbers? How do we get to 3.5% of the population or 25% of the population? How do we get them involved? Well, let's ask the question a slightly different way. What are the barriers to them getting involved? So in terms of Extinction Rebellion, and really my starting point here, as you will see, is Extinction Rebellion moved the dial, they opened a space. What are we gonna do about that space that's got opened up? They did this with actually relatively small numbers of people. Um, we were hoping for millions. We got about 10, 20,000. So what we do, I would suggest, needs to be at least in very significant part, perhaps primarily positive. It needs to be about directly, perhaps, 
making the change that needs to happen, happen. I would argue that as a result of this consideration, what needs to come next needs to be distributed, by which I mean that it needs to be happening all over the place. It's not enough for it to just happen in politics. It needs to happen in the economy as well. It needs to happen in the parts of our society that have to do with ideas. But if you say or even imply to people, you need to become an activist in order to be part of this change, that's a big barrier to entry. I would say, yeah, sure, we need more activists and there are gonna be more activists in the 2020s. This is gonna be a decade of deterioration, of climate decline, of increasingly terrible weather, of an increasingly wide wake up call. But many people who respond to that call are still not gonna to want to become activists. What they're gonna to want to do, they're gonna to want to take action, perhaps action of the direct positive kind that I mentioned a minute or two ago. As I've already implied, my argument is Extinction Rebellion, along with Greta, along with David Attenborough, et cetera, achieved something phenomenal. Rather than trying to escalate further, as for example, in Select Britain have done, have done, what if we took full advantage of that achievement, of the shifting of the Overton, Overton window, the kicking open of the so-called Overton window of what's perceived as politically possible that occurred in 2019? And what I've outlined so far is a set of characteristics that whatever successfully fills that space is gonna have. It's gonna deliberately not set up those various barriers to entry, arrestability, left or green or identity politics, e-politics. It's gonna overcome a sense of hopelessness. It's gonna be joined up. It's gonna be more positive than negative. And it's gonna be mostly beyond activism. What it will be, is a new mass, inclusive, genuinely inclusive, distributed yet joined up, moderate flank. Extinction Rebellion has been a radical flank and Slate Britain has tried to push that radical flank even further. There's a law of diminishing returns here. Relative to Extinction Rebellion, what I'm arguing to you here this evening is, we need a moderate flank. We need to be that moderate flank. This moderate flank needs to be inclusive. There are many, many people who feel excluded by the jargon of intersectionalist identity politics. I'm talking about ordinary people. I'm talking about mums and dads, citizens, working class folk, old folk, all sorts of people. If we're gonna be genuinely inclusive, we need to be welcoming to people who are not Greens. We need to be welcoming to people who are not well-educated. We need to be welcoming to people who are not into the jargon of the day that is consuming university campuses. So this is my proposal for what we need to do in the wake of the catastrophic failure of our leaders and of this generation of elites. We need a new mass, inclusive, genuinely inclusive, distributed yet joined up, moderate flank. It needs to be distributed, I would argue, especially into workplaces and communities. Why those two? Well, in the case of workplaces, workplaces are where many of us spend most of our lives. Workplaces really matter. They are a huge part of what we do and they are a vast part of the impact that is made upon society. And communities, well, communities are where we live. Communities are what is real. Many of us spend a lot of time in virtual communities these days, but guess what? They're virtual. They don't really exist in a very fundamental sense. They are not geographical. If the internet comes under extreme pressure in the years to come, which it may well do, they may disintegrate altogether. Where people live and where they need to get their food and their water and their shelter and their community is in their community. So workplaces and communities, there are many other aspects of society where this moderate flank analysis is appropriate but in the limited time I have here, I'm gonna focus on workplaces and communities. Let me give an example of each, an example of a real new organization that is incipient in each of these areas. So in the area, in the area of workplaces, there's an interesting new organization called Lawyers for Net Zero. What Lawyers for Net Zero is trying to do? Well, the clue's in the name, right? They're trying to get the law, they think the law is a pivot point in our society. They wanna target lawyers and see if they can get them 
acting towards net zero. What would that mean? There's a whole load of things it would mean. There's a whole load of things that it can mean in any workplace or business or institution. In the case of the law, it's obviously going to mean things like uh, what kind of cases are you taking on? But in any workplace, there are questions like, is there commuting happening? If so, how? There are questions like, what is our product? Have we got adaptation built into it? Is it low carbon? There are questions like, what do we do with our profits? Right? All this set, there's a whole vast agenda here, right? For employees, for workplaces, to, for businesses to be looking at. And what I imagine is a whole load of organizations like law Lawyers for Net Zero, organizing in a distributed way in workplaces to try to make these places where the change that is not happening fast enough starts to happen. And if people can see it happening in all these different workplaces, then it'll be joined up. In the case of communities, my top example will be climate emergency centers, a new phenomenon which many of you will be aware of already and many, many more will be aware of soon. A far spreading network across the country of spaces which are available, which are being taken over and repurposed as hubs to show how the sustainable and adapted future that we could be moving into could be and starting to try to make that into, into reality. And here's an interesting fact, which you may not know about both Lawyers for Net Zero and Climate Emergency Centers. They're both started by people who moved on, as I have done, from a wonderful and successful time within Extinction Rebellion. Is there a way in which you could be moving on to something which could be even more effective now in terms of how we go forward in the situation that we're in now, post the risible COP26? Let me mention also, if these workplace-based moderate flanks or community resilience adaptation-based moderate flanks get stopped in their tracks, stopped in their tracks by government regulations or the law, then it seems to me it's essential and it seems to me it's now possible that they will not take no for an answer in a way that in the past often people did take no for an answer. So take the Transition Towns Network, for example, absolutely splendid networks, had a huge effect. But often what happened when Transition Towns ran up against the fact that the powers of local councils were needed in order to make the kind of things that Transition Towns wanted to do happen, and the local councils weren't willing to do it, Often the response of the transition town folk in question was to say, oh dear, well then we can't do it. That I think is no longer an acceptable response. And that means that political action of some kind or another is required when that kind of thing happens. I say of some kind or another, it could be stuff through the ballot box, of course, but it could equally be something like nonviolent direct action. Now this wouldn't be nonviolent direct action to protest exactly. It wouldn't be negative, it would be nonviolent direct action to make possible what we are determined to make possible in order to protect our and our children's future, in order to change our communities in the way that they desperately need to change in the face of the sword of Damocles now hanging over us. So escalation within communities could mean moving to positive, protective, nonviolent direct action. And in terms of workplaces, how could we escalate within workplaces without going as far as to get arrested? Well, it's obvious, isn't it? Strikes. If workplace-based activism and action gets resisted, there will be the possibility for climate strikes. And after all, if our children can do it, then why can't we? Many of you are here this evening, whether you know it or not, because you have leadership capability. You're a visionary or you wouldn't be on this call at all. You could choose to use that vision to escalate or radicalize further at this moment. My honest view is that at this moment, that may change, but that at this moment, that is very unlikely to be a successful strategy. So you could choose to escalate or radicalize further, or you could do what the people who founded Lawyers for Net Zero or Climate Emergency Centers or many others actually from XR have done. You could choose to help lead a load of moderates. And that's really my pitch to you this evening here. I want to ask you to help make the incipient new mass 
inclusive, moderate flank, a reality. I believe that now that our leaders have failed us, it's our best shot. And it could shame them and other climate laggards into action. It could gradually take turn, could gradually turn into having a more political form. It could be the gateway drug for a lot of people who are not yet willing to become activists. It could lead to a great deal of necessary action, which could trigger further cascades of action and perhaps activism. So the question I would love you to ask yourselves is, if you find this analysis at all compelling, and well, if you don't have a better idea, what's your moderate flank? What could you do? Maybe you're doing it already, but if you're not doing it already, what could you do or what could you up the ante on? What could you put further energy into, which would really make it happen in your workplace perhaps, or your profession, or in your local uh, community. How can you help to turn this vision into reality? And to just finish on a key point that I made a little while ago, I believe very strongly that this mass new moderate flank, which is starting to come, and I think will come a lot stronger as a whole load more people wake up over the course of the next few years. I believe that this new mass moderate flank is our best shot. And I believe that if we can enable people to see that it is happening, it will generate a new hope where there was no hope before. Because if we can get people to see that even if our leaders fail us, then actually in this distributed, semi-joined up way, we can do it ourselves. And we can start thereby to build a new society out of what will be the emerging wreckage of the old. That will be the most enormous and exciting wake up call of all.